kid's up to something. I've got a hunch whatever it is will lead us to our man. This old ghost town is a natural hideout for a killer like Ridlock. Yeah. Pick this fellow up outside looking for you, Ace. Eh? You know him? Yeah, the name's Larkin. What's the matter, Red? The law on your tail? Yeah. Took the United States Marshal. Trailed me out of here from Missouri. I heard you was in this country. I thought you'd have helped me hide out. Yeah. I ain't forgot you done me a favor once. I guess we can use another good hand around here. But this is a nice time for you to leave a couple of United States Marshals here. Just when we're doing all right with our own plan. into our trap, Chief. Fine. But the two United States Marshals are trailing him. Well, that's what you was after me. That couldn't be any better. Well, what do you mean, Ace? In a few minutes, there'll be a kid coming down this ladder from the well above, looking for something we got. His name's Ted Hall, one of the heirs of this property we aim to make ours. But he ain't getting any presents in that ladder, and neither are those two Marshal friends of yours. We'll put this mask on and never be seen outside without it. All right, fellas, clear out. You got your orders. I'm going to give Red a chance here to get his hand in on this deal right now. I think we got something. Yeah. This is Nell Pickwick's house. They used to say that the old mine would tunnel clear through this hill up to the ranch. Now that well must lead us to Come on, we'll follow the kid. Just long enough to square accounts for O'Neill and Patterson. You know, they were two of my best friends, Chief. I heard they were killed. What happened? They were found on the desert, out in that Nevada area, between the ghost town of Pickwick and Sundown. They were on the trail of Red Lark and a killer, trailing him all the way from Missouri. By the way that their bodies were pumped full of lead, it couldn't have been a one-man job. Outside of you and Buck Roberts, O'Neill and Patterson were the fastest men on the draw I have ever had in the service. 
No one man could have stopped him like that. Hmm. You mean old Nell Pickwick? Lucky hunch mine? Exactly. That old gal still live out in that crazy house she built on the desert? Still hoarding the gold she took out of that mine? I don't know anything about the hoarding, but I figured it was just another one of those tall tales that people like to hatch about poor old cronies like Nell. But she still lived out there up until a couple of weeks ago when I got the report that she was found dead. Yeah, yeah an old desert right out there by the name of Luke Martin, if in a shack, found on the Pickwick Street. Still with her boots on. A pick in one hand and a shovel in the other. Well, I guess the old gal went to her maker, still believing that her hunches would lead to another strike. I've got a hunch that's going to take me right to that ghost town. Hold on, Jim. You may need some help. That'll figure that out for myself. So long. Good luck. You shouldn't have gotten off that stage, lady. You should have stayed right on her and gone into sundown. Well, you could have... Mrs. Tolbert, I'm going to stay right here if I sit all day and night until someone comes along and take me to Pickwick. Let me tell you, Miss Hall. Pickwick is nothing but a dried up ghost town and no place for a little silly like you, even if you do own the works, now that your brother's among the missing. I'm going to find out what happened to Ted. Can't you understand, Mr. Tolbert, that this is much more important to me than my grandmother's estate? Well, I'm blessed if I know how you're going to get there. Hello? Here comes old Luke Martin. Mr. Martin of Pickwick? Yes. Hi, Luke. Hi, Dave. Didn't expect you back for a couple of months. Well, I got corn for the pigs and the backup of myself and... Well, stab my cat. Who's that? Oh, Mr. Martin, I'm Josie Hall, Ted's sister. Well, you'll take me to the ranch, won't you? Ted Hall told me you had a pretty sister, but I never expected to see a young man as pretty as that. As for taking you to the ranch, no sirree, Missy. Oh, but... Oh, no, now listen. You better stay here with Jake and his missus. They'll put you up until you can get a stage back. I guess old Judge Crayler's taking pretty good care of old Nell's estate for you. I'm not going back, Mr. Martin. Not till I know whether Ted is alive or dead. I'm going to Pickwick if I have to walk. Got a railroad street, same as old Nell, eh? <laughs> Chip off off the old block if ever I beat one. <laughs> hey, you better take my buckboard and load her into it. Well, I reckon I'll have to, or I'm a horn toad to hold to. She's liable to start walking right away. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Martin. Now listen, as soon as I get my supplies, we can mosey along. First, we'll talk Jake's old woman into giving us a cup of coffee. The real cream in it. Yes, how's that, huh? Eh? <laughs> Hello. Anybody at your home? Get him up, stranger. Who are you, and what are you doing loping through the ghost town and winding up here? Now, just take it easy, bub. Keep him up and start talking. My name's Hopkins. Sandy Hopkins. Since when has there been a law in Nevada that says a prospector can't go loping where he darn pleases and end up by visiting his old friend Luke Martin? Where is Luke? Well, according to this note, he's gone to the junction to get himself some supplies. Hey, who are you that you're particular about finding out who comes from where for what? Ain't the law by any chance, are you? No, the law's going to sleep around these parts. I'm Tom Cook, foreman at the Pickwick Ranch. Pickwick? Pickwick. Seems to me I did hear Luke say something about that once. If you're a friend of Luke, you better stay put right here or get going and keep going. Unless you want your head shot off. Yeah? We've got reasons for being suspicious of strangers around here. Now remember what I said. <laughs> My sociable country. It it takes. Sure glad to have you around, Marshal. Because there's something down queer about the way young Ten Hall's vanished. And now his sister's gone out there. And another thing. Old Nell Pickwick. 
she was the toughest she wore horse in these parts. You can't tell me that she folded up natural like. Wasn't like her. No, sir. Well, on the other hand, she was pretty old. Sometimes even the toughest ones go out just like that. By the way, did I understand you to say that those marshals, O'Neill and Patterson, stopped here on their way to sundown? Yeah, had coffee and some of the old ladies' flapjacks. Well, thanks for the information. I'll see if I can catch up to Miss Hall. So long. So long, Marshal. this Judge Crail you're speaking about? Oh, a lawyer fella lives over in Sundown, Marshal. Always was pretty close to old Nell. Handled all of her deals and I guess most of her money. Been living at the ranch for over a month now. I'd like to meet him. Well, just follow me. We'll meet him. Come on. company up to the house. Luke brought her in from the junction. Her? Yeah. The new boss of this whole shebang, Josie Hall. And that ain't all. There's the United States Marshal rode in with him. A marshal? Well, the judge took him in hand. Say, Tom, what's this fellow hanging around here so long for, anyhow? Why shouldn't the judge stick around? He's been old Nell's best friend for years and he's still running her affairs. Hmm. Imagine anyone building a place like this out in the middle of the desert. No. Nobody but old Nell. You know, Marshal, when the ghoul started piling up, she got it into her head to have everything she'd heard about everybody else happen. So she had it all shipped around the horn, then hauled in here by mule teams, and piled it up here. <laughs> Well, how do you like your new home? It's so weird. There's something frightening about this house. I, I can't blame Mother for running away to marry my father. And I'm glad Grandmother didn't ask us here after they died. It gives me the creep. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of spooky, but... Now, don't you let your imagination start playing tricks on you. I wonder what's happened to that judge. I could really use some of that coffee he went after, you know. Yeah, me too. Well, they ought to be moving back home to my shack. What's that? Hello, Luke. Hi, Tom. I didn't know we were having visitors or I'd got here earlier. This is Ted Hall's sister, Josie. Tom Cook, your foreman, Missy. How do you do, Miss Hall? How do you do? She came all the way out here to see what happened to her brother. Well, I'm sorry about Ted, Miss Hall. I don't think you should have come here. Well, I'm not afraid, if that's what you mean. Besides, Marshal McCall will be here. How do you do? Hello, Marshal. Oh, mighty glad to have you here. Say, hey, where's Judge Crail? Oh, he went out to round up Pawnee to get some jabba. That dumb Indian is never wrong when he's wanted. Well, I can't wait for jabba. After he's seen you later, so long. So long. By the way, uh, Luke. Huh? I just dropped by your shack. There's a friend of yours waiting there for you. Friend of mine? Yeah, his name's Sandy Hopkins. 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 No, ain't never heard of him. You mean you don't know him? No. Well, so long, Tom.
Pony will be here presently for the coffee. You're getting yourself well acquainted, Tom. Yes, but Miss Hall won't listen to me, Judge. She told me about her experience this afternoon. I ought to convince her that she should leave here. Mm, I don't know. I, I think it's safe enough with the marshal here. After all, our grandmother left her this property, and she has a perfect right to do as she likes. Yes, but Judge... Thank you, Judge Krell, for seeing things my way. Well, I've decided to make my headquarters over in Pickwick. Luke tells me there's a house over there belongs to caretaker that I could live in. You know, that's a good idea, Marshal. Everything leads from the town and back into it. We can't miss anything that goes on. Huh? Pony, I told you not to come sneaking into a room with those confounded moccasins on. Well, you should scare me for. I'm all right. I'll serve the coffee. I'll go. Get him on his feet. You know him? I've never saw him before. Who is it? Pony, get some water, quick. Let me have some of that black coffee, miss. Thank you. Here, try to drink this. That'll make you feel better. Thanks. Been seeing things on the desert. Still seeing them. Oh, he, he means the house. No, this is real. This is old Nell Pickwick's house on the ranch. It's just over the hill from that ghost town of Pickwick. Where do you come from? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't. First thing I remember is three days ago at a water hole, a horse, myself. Amnesia. Haven't you anything on you to identify yourself with? No. I must have been prospecting. Oh, I can't remember. I've got a saddlebag full of gold there. Mind if we take a look? Help yourself. Gosh. Look. Man, you've got a small fortune here. Where'd you get it? Don't you know who you are or where you've got it? No, eh? Everything's so... so hazy. I... Could I have some food, please? Yeah, sure. Pony, dish up some grub for the stranger. I'd suggest you keep him here till he's recovered his strength. He's had a bad shot. Maybe a nice rest would help him recover his memory. Not a bad idea. You'll have to share my room, stranger. Thanks. Think you can make it up the stairs? Oh, sure. Hey, your, your gold. Oh, thank you. I guess it'll be all right in a place like this. Oh, 
I want to have a talk with Miss Josie. I'm so glad it's you. I've been worried about that stranger. Oh, you don't have to worry about him, Miss Josie. He's just some fellow that was lost in the desert. But I'll keep my eye on him. Huh. I'm sorry to be so on edge, but I just can't help it. I know. But that's why I think you'd better pack, and I'll take you to the stage in the morning. I appreciate your concern, but I'm not leaving Pickwick. Not until I've searched every nook and corner head. Even mine. Oh, mine. I have my reason for wanting to start there first. The mine's out, Miss Jules. You'll have to leave that to the marshal. Just keep the pretty belly polishing all that stuff up. Please do what I tell you. Lock your door tonight and keep it locked, no matter what happens. And don't leave this room. Promise? Well, what could possibly happen here? I don't know, but we don't want to take any chances, especially with you. Now, promise me? I promise. Honey, you might need it. Good night. Good night. Pretty good sandwiches. Hey, what's the matter with that old sidewash? Dumb? No. I was here six months before I got him to talk to me. Been with old Nell for years. Say, you better leave your boots on when you come to bed. What do you mean? Well, we've been sleeping with them on lately and our gun's handy around here. Sounds like trouble on me. Trouble? Plenty. First two marshals were murdered, and Miss Hall's brother disappeared, and old Nell died suddenly. Well, that's all there has been. Anybody done anything about it? Well, that's why Marshal McCall's here. Sheriff over at Sundown can't handle it. Says it's out of his jurisdiction. Well, I guess I'll turn in. Put out that candle, will you, when you're through? Sure. Well, I hope you'll be comfortable, Marshal. Thanks. I'll see you in the morning, Judge. We'll go over the whole situation. All right. Good night. Good night. You just see if you can't recollect a thing or two. Do you remember when that sheriff was killed over there in the Purple Moon Saloon in Tonopah? No. And in Tonopah? But I ain't never seen you. No. No. Mm. Don't cut no ice, so you're welcome just the same. What do you say we turn in, huh? Sure. Or our partner. Yeah. What? That young foreman over at the ranch. You know, he's gonna keep on being suspicious of me. If you keep on forgetting to remember that we're old friends. <laughs> Don't worry about Tom. I'll take care of him. Hey, come on.
You see a masked rider riding through here? Yes. He went that way. Hey, what are you doing here? When I woke up, you were gone. Thought you were in trouble. Hey, you got away awfully quick. Well, I went out the back way under the stairs. What happened? Found a man trying to steal my gold. He was wearing a mask. Got to wait over the roof, and I followed him. He went down this way. What about you, Cook? I didn't see him. Where did you go? Over to Luke's shack. I was worried about that Sandy Hopkins fellow when Luke told me he never heard of him. Well, it's... Well, what? Well, I found this note tied to my saddle, telling me to warn you to leave here, Marshal, or you'd get the same thing that Marshals O'Neill and Patterson got. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, what about this fellow, Sandy Hopkins? Well, he was asleep with Luke in the shack. So I figured maybe I did have him wrong. Say, you're not accusing me of... Nobody's accusing anybody of anything right now. But the people in that house tonight are the only ones knew he had that gold. Now that you've accounted for yourself and Sandy Hopkins, what about Judge Crail? Don't tell me you didn't leave him there to watch out for Miss Hall. I haven't even seen him yet. He left me here about an hour ago. If anything happens to Miss Hall, I'll... Come on, let's get back to the rest. He would have killed me. He must have been the one who left that note on my pillow. Young lady, this convinces me that Palmer's right. This is no place for you. Tom? Are you all right? Oh, yes, thanks to the stranger. He told me what happened while I was over to check on the prospector visiting Luke. Perhaps I shouldn't stay. I'd plan driving to sundown tomorrow. You'd be safe there, Miss Josie, with the judge and his wife, and close enough to hear what's going on. I'd ride over Sunday and let you know what we hear about Ted. That's settled it. We're driving to sundown tomorrow. We talked things over with Marshal McCall on the way over. Now you toddle off to bed like a good little girl. Tony brought your gold down. He found it on the floor. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Josie. Well, Tom, I guess I'll turn in too. Good night. Good night, Judge. We might as well turn in too. If you don't mind, I'll ride back and have a talk with that Marshal. I'll take those along just in case. When I get back, I'll bunk down here. You want me to go along? No, you better stay with the girl. See you in the morning. Good night. Oh, it's you, killer. Well, you were a long time getting here. Well, you told me to meet you here, didn't you? Yes, but what are you doing over in that funeral parlor? Oh, now that's the way I come out. You ought to seen the way I went in. When I sneaked away from old Luke, on the way across here, I run into a masked rider, and I tailed him to the entrance of the mine. And he went on in, horse and all. Well, that's the way it looked to me in the dark. You mean to say you lost his trail in the mine? Well, 
I've done a lot of man hunting in my day. But it's the first time I went down next to China and come up alongside of a marble slab and a pile of pine boxes. <laughs> you trying to tell me that the tunnel of that mine runs right under this town? Yes, sir. -y. And then some. Now, how do you figure it out? Well, the only way... Hi there, Buck. Hi, killer. <laughs> you know, old Luke was telling me a stranger who couldn't remember very much dropped in the Pickwick Ranch. <laughs> you sure can pick him up, can he? <laughs> hey, listen, fellas. We gotta compare notes and do it quick. I gotta get back. And I got your word saying you thought this job concerned old Nell Pickwick. I stopped the recorder's office, the county seat. He picked up a choice bit of information. Sandy here uncovered some things tonight. Going to put a new complexion on this whole deal. Yeah? How come? I found out that mine runs clean under this town. Clean under this town? And I found the gold that came out of that mine that old Nell's been hoarding all these years. If that's the answer, why didn't the killer take the gold and clear out? That's the answer, all right. And that's not all. Listen. Early. I think that's my business, stranger. May I ask why you were at my door? We're just about to knock the wake in you. Listen, lady, you gotta trust me and do just as I say. I know it sounds fishy and all of that, but you gotta get out of here and get out of here right away, and without Judge Crail or anybody else. All right, but how? I don't care how. Get to the junction, stay with the storekeeper and his wife. And don't you leave there till you hear from me. But Judge Creel expects me. Now listen, don't argue with me. You trust me, don't you? Yes. Stay clear of that bunkhouse so nobody will see you. You'll be all right. Come on. What in tarnation are you doing here? Oh, look, I've got to talk to you. Why, well, you ought to be home in bed. Why, it can't be. It's, uh, why, it, it's just five o'clock. Yes, I know. I slipped away from the ranch before anyone else was up. Yeah, but what for? Tom and Judge Crail are making me leave when the judge returns to sundown today. I won't do it, Luke. Not till I know whether Ted is dead or alive. I've got to find out for myself. I know, honey. But how are you going to do it? i got a hunch you shouldn't have too much hope. Luke, Ted wrote me that you were his friend. Don't you see? You're the only one I can trust. Just what are you driving at? Look, here's Ted's last letter. And in it he says that he found out something about the mine, but that he couldn't write about it until he had investigated further. Uh-huh. Hmm. Well, I'd be doggone. Well, oh, don't you see, Luke? The mine must have something to do with his disappearance. Maybe he isn't dead. Maybe he just fell or, or got injured so that he couldn't get out. Mm -hmm. You might be right. Now, anyone that don't know them tunnels might fall into a pit. Oh, I think Luke, then you will take me there? You'll help me? Sure I will. Wait till I get a lantern. You've got to have a light. Now, we'll go right over there and see what we can do.
Good morning. Morning. I took the liberty of telling our friend that we wouldn't have time for anything but coffee this morning. Do you mind? No, not at all. Here you are. Oh, Judge. I wouldn't wake her up. She'd be better off if she didn't know what was going on. Will you join us? Did you talk to the marshal last night? I did. <laughs> Coffee, eh? There you are. You know, I planned an early start for Josie, so we'd get to sundown in time to send Sheriff Manning over to you boys and that marshal to give you a hand. Not a bad idea. You know, I've been thinking this thing over. And if those two murdered marshals did follow that killer Red Larkin, what better place could he find for a hideout than that maze of old tunnels in the mine? Sure. Why didn't we think of that before? Tom, you take it in the other two hands, and with the marshal and the stranger here, search the mine and get him if they're in there. In the meantime, I'm sending Sheriff Manning over to give you a hand in case you're into real trouble. What do you think? I think it's a swell idea. But the marshal has plans of his own. He's waiting for us now. Finish your coffee and we'll go and see him. Uh, oh, what are his plans, sir? What did he find out? Oh, what's that different? The marshal's running things as far as I'm concerned. Let's not keep him waiting. Get to have a light, you know. He'd like to get lost in there and kind of dangerous. Now you stay close behind me, but watch your step. I'll be careful. Something's going wrong. The judge indicated we should follow him. Put on your mask. Let's mount up. Yes, you better get started so you can get through those tunnels by the time the judge leaves with the girl. You know what the orders are. Yeah, I know. But you sure made it tough when you boarded up that well. I could have been up there in two minutes. Shut up and get going. The judge will have a horse ready for you behind the barn. All right.
he was standing guard, and he fell down the well. He's done for. Say, what's she doing here? Never mind that. Come on, we gotta get out of here. Judge here seems to think we ought to go ahead with a search while he takes a trip with Miss Hall to sundown to notify the sheriff. Is that right, Judge? Now, you don't suppose he'd be thinking about old Nell's will that makes him sole beneficiary to all her property in case anything happened to Ted and Josie, do you? Who the judge? No. No, he wouldn't think of anything like that. He'd come to think of it, eh? Maybe that's why he's making that trip with Miss Hall. I thought of that. Of course, he would come into quite a scatter of property with that lost vein that Red Larkin and his boys found in the mine, and that bullion that you discovered in old Nell's room. Aren't you gentlemen letting the heat get the best of you? Wait a minute. You killed old Nell because you found the vein. You killed Ted and you killed Josie to get it. Why, I heard it. I don't know, but one of them ducked in the funeral parlor. I've been looking for the stranger, but I can't find him. He's no stranger. That's Marshal Buck Roberts. Marshal? Yeah, see if you can locate the judge. pick up the trail of that judge.
him, I found the mine in the lost gold vein. Redlock has got the girl and old Luke down there. Let's go! The game is up. Stop these people and get out of here. Wait a minute, Judge. If the game is up, what about that gold for leaving the old lady's room? I ain't going out of this deal with nothing. Don't worry, I've taken care of that. It'll be just too bad for you if you try to follow. Look! Look! Look, what are we going to do? You, Judge. Yeah, and we'll fix them. We let them chase us up Devil's Canyon, then we'll give them the slip. And then we'll double back to the house and get that bullion. Come on. Tom, you go back to mine and get the girl. Double back through those trees and down the canyon. Come on, boys. That's funny. This is the Box Canyon. They've given us the slip through those trees. And that shortcut leads right in the direction of the house. The bullion. Sure, that's the reason they tricked us. And they're doubling back for it. Well, come on, Rough Riders. Now back up. You ain't going nowhere. Well, how you getting along down there? Okay, Bond. It's just like shooting fish in a barrel. Here they come, Tim. Hi, Marshal. Hello, Tim. Buck. Killer. Marshall. Well, it looks like you boys have done it again. And right on schedule, too. I just got your wire two days ago. Well, they're all yours now. You can tell Bat Mattis and I'll wire my report from Wyoming. You bet I will. Go on, fellas. Go all on, right, boys. Take them away. I don't watch that, Judge. I don't know what we'd have done without you folks. I thought you'd been wonderful. Well, you know, uh, ma'am, Mayor Luke told me you was in trouble. I thought I'd like to be a little help to you, and I... Uh, well, you'll be hearing from me. Goodbye. Bye. Say, so, you know that... that uh... Oh, 
silver. Oh, See that's a nice little kid back there. You know, whenever we bring a couple of lovebirds together like them two kids back there, always reminds me of the Woody. It'd be mighty lonesome for me down there in Texas. Listen, you'll find another or Tim and I are crazy. Well, if I do, I ain't going on no more manhunts with you two. Not until I get her to the altar. <laughs> well, don't forget to send my invitation up to Wyoming. And mine to Arizona. <laughs> well, so long, Rough Riders. <laughs> so long, Rough Riders. So long, Rough Riders. Rough Riders ride, beware. Rough Riders ride, beware. Thank you.